Hey everyone, I'm Casey with Sea Reefs Makes, and welcome to episode two of the Big Build Off, hosted by the Builders Challenge. Last week, I took you through some of the design process, and then it was off to the hardwood dealer to pick out the walnut material for the build, and we brought it back to the shop and started processing it to get it ready for the glue up. After the glue up, I cut it round using a circle cutting jig. It is sitting just now under 48 inches in diameter and just over an inch and a half thick. This week, I'm gonna dive more into the design of the base and how I came up with the shape based on some of the grain and character elements that I saw in the walnut. And then also, I'm gonna show how I created these one-to-one -one templates, which I then made into half-inch plywood templates, which I can carry this shape then over into the walnut uh, using that grain pattern that I'm looking for. Using templates should really help with the productivity and the repeatability of getting the same kind of angles and cuts that I need throughout all these pieces in the base, which should help everything come together great at the final glue up. Okay, let's get building. So as I was drawing up some ideas for what I wanted the base to look like, I kept referring back to the boards that I bought. I kept looking at the grain lines and wondering what would complement them the best. As you can see in some of these shots, the grain was long and straight with slight curves and angles to it, so I incorporated those lines into the base layout. The grain pattern would extend vertically up one of the legs and then would match up with the upper stretcher and then allow the grain to continue across the stretcher and then down the other leg. The only real breaks in the grain would be at the miter joints and where the lower stretcher attached to the legs. Once I had the design looking good, I created and printed each of the base pieces as a one-to-one -one print. I then took these prints and transferred them to the half-inch plywood that I was going to use for the templates. After transferring all the prints, it was time to start cutting things out at the bandsaw. I rough cut each of these parts just outside of my lines, being careful to leave enough extra material to remove later at the sander. Now that all the shapes were cut out, I got out the miter gauge and headed over to the table saw to start cutting the angles that would ultimately be the miter joints for the stretchers and legs. None of these angles are really known as I modeled them to what best fit the base in my design, so I had to cut them to the line and not a preset or a round number on the gauge. After all the angles were cut, it was over to the spindle sander to clean up the bandsaw lines and any rough areas on the templates. I made two leg templates so I could lay out a prototype of what the base would ultimately be. This way I could measure real values and check them to my model and make sure I hadn't missed something or botched an angle cut. Now it's time to lay out the templates on the walnut and start finding those grain lines I was talking about earlier. As I was marking the parts on the walnut, I took into account any spots that had defects or issues that I wanted to avoid. I also made sure to leave a little gap between the parts so that I could use the miter saw to rough cut the pieces to length later on. As you can see, the shape of the base parts matches the grain really well and I think this will be a cool characteristic of the table after it's finished. After all the parts were marked out, I added some extra marks to indicate possible clamping areas for the glue up later on. And then it was over to the miter saw to cut the boards down to links that were just longer than the template lines. I then took the stretchers to the table saw. I used my oversized tapering sled to line up and cut the top sections of the stretchers based on the template line.
Once I was done with those cuts, I took a piece of scrap 3 quarter inch plywood to use as a makeshift sled. I set the edge of the plywood to the saw blade and then butted the fence up to the right side for reference. I then laid the template out on the plywood with the mitered edge touching off on the teeth of the saw blade. I then held the template in place and added some blocking around it using brad nails. These will keep the angle true and also allow the part to be held in place as I make repeated cuts. After all these cuts were completed on the table saw, I went back to the bandsaw to rough cut all the curves and angles on the walnut pieces. I made sure to leave excess material for clamping. Once that was done, I did some final passes at the table saw to remove excess material and give myself a flat reference for when I do the half lap stretcher joints later on using the dado stack. Be sure to tune in next week to see me put those templates to work on the router table, and I also use a dado stack for the first time. Then we will get everything glued up and in clamps. I still have a lot to do and this thing is already looking good. I'd like to thank Firm Grip Gloves for sponsoring this video and for being a part of the big build off. It pays to have good gloves when you're working with the rough edges of walnut. If you liked this video, please click subscribe and hit the notification bell down below and follow along over the next several weeks. I'm Casey with C. Reeves Makes and thanks for watching.